will be generated in uh, here if uh, a Chinese athlete is to be first. In fact, that map was incorrect. That was the map for the 50k walk. So it won't be 24 laps, don't worry. It will be uh, a, little, a little more gentle than that for these women. The 50k walk coming up tomorrow, and then on Sunday morning we have the women's marathon. So 50 athletes taking part in this 20k walk. As we said, the, the Chinese, perhaps the strongest team in the field, but so you never know in the walks, anything can happen. There's uh, obviously Hong Lu, who is that uh, fourth at the last two Olympics, so obviously a seasoned competitor, she's 28 years of age. She's then followed by two of her other compatriots, Juzi Liu and Jing Jing Nye. So at the moment, it looks as if it could be maybe a better chance for the goal for the Japanese, but you never know. We thought that maybe in the previous men's walk, didn't we, until Perez, the Spaniard, came through right at the very end to snatch the gold medal away from them. So. Let's see what happens. As I said, conditions, I think, will be a big factor here in the walk. Lyudmila. She's one to watch. European silver medalist last year. Oh. OK, here's the correct map. What we saw earlier was the men's 50K. So I'm sure some of the women would have been slightly perturbed to think that they might be doing 24 laps. There you go. That's more like it. And, of course, they do still finish in the stadium. And as I said, what noise we can expect if it is a Chinese walker coming home first. Hong Liu must start this as favourite, surely. Bronze medals in Berlin and in Moscow, a silver in Daegu, and she's finished in the unluckiest place of all in the last two Olympics. Fourth here in Beijing and fourth in London as well. The Italians have got a strong team, and so the, uh, the Spanish uh, contingent here. Giorgio of Italy, Palisano and Rigaldo of Italy. They've got uh, bronze medals in the European Championships. They've got 10th at the Olympic Games. So, and the World Cup winner at the 10K. So they're very strong too. And I think the nations that are used to obviously training and uh, competing in these sort of conditions will be the ones to watch out for. Well, I wonder whether we'll see one or two surprise medalists it was Miguel Angel Lopez who won the men's walk. Zhen Wang hit the front at 13K, but the Spaniard reeled him in. And then Ben Thorne, the Canadian, came home for the bronze with a new national record. So it may not all go the way of the Chinese, which we'll have to wait and see. But certainly Hong Liu, I saw some of that walk in La Corona, and she was absolutely metronomic. An amazing performance. 42.39 for the first half and then 41.59 for the second. I'm not sure it'll be quite as quick as that here today. As I said, it's uh, just coming up to half eight in the morning local time and it's already absolutely baking hot. Brutal conditions. And as we saw in the men's walk, brutal conditions even for the athletes who you would think would be used to it. Those born and bred here in China. Well, there is the world record holder. Three successive medals in the recent editions of the World Championship. Can she upgrade those two bronze and a silver to gold? Juhi Liu, fourth in the World Cup a couple of years ago, six in the Olympics in 2012, but she won the Chinese World Championship trials. Trachotova of the Czech Republic. European junior champion at uh, 10,000 metres, seventh in Moscow, and got the world junior gold last year. She's a prolific major championship performer. De Senna, South American record holder at 20K, and Ciciana Lopez, 11th in the Pan American Games just last month in Toronto. But is this the morning when China finally stand on top of the podium for the first time at their own edition of the World Championship here in Beijing? Big, big hour and a half coming up. 
for the three Chinese in this race. Hong Liu, the favourite for gold, the world record holder. She'll be the darling of a nation if she manages it. Here we go then. The women's 20k race walk has begun. And China's hopes of a gold are out on the course in the form of the new world record holder and three-time world championship medalist, Hong Liu. I think it's her smaller compatriot that's gone off in front. I'm not sure. Xu Lu. But they did this in the men's walk, didn't they, the Chinese? They really pushed it hard right from the word go. They didn't ease off at all. Normally, you get a little bit of a respite. They tend to sort of take things fairly easily before they go out onto the uh, course itself. But at the moment, you can see the uh, pattern of this race has already been written. Yes, they're not, uh, they're not hanging around out there. Already a group of six or seven moving away from the main body of walkers. I think the uh, idea, I think, as it was with the men, is that they walked so fast at the beginning that they split the field up, and then it creates all sorts of problems for the technique of the other athletes trying to catch up. And also fatigue. As I said earlier in the, in the 20K, there's Liu. That's the younger of the, that's the, younger of the two. That is uh, Zhuzi Liu. What happens is, with the walk, it's a, a difficult uh, discipline. You, if you're walking fast, you're under the scrutiny of the judges. And as you tire, your technique starts fading. And that's again when you're under the scrutiny of the judges. It's a bit, as someone said, it's a bit like uh, who can whisper the loudest. Very difficult to actually get correct. I've never tried that competition. I have to give, <laughs> give that a go. <laughs> I love that analogy. Oh, you learn a lot from sitting next to Steve Ovet for uh, seven and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, Rob. <laughs> but there we are. Once and, once and again, you can come out with something that uh, can be remembered. But at the moment, it, as I said before, very similar to that men's race where they pushed hard right from the word go. And it doesn't leave any respite for the others. They've got to catch up as best they can. I think that's uh, that October behind. Now, she's an interesting uh, character, third at the moment. She's a multi-discipline, multi-sport event uh, athlete. She actually was 19th place in the world uh, road race for cycling in 2013, which was in Florence. I think she is the tall athlete in about third place there at the moment. So um, interesting. She's got this ability to switch from one sport to another. Usually in these sort of things, especially the walking, it does take an awful lot of time just to get the training done, let alone the competitions. Well, not only that, it says here on her biography, she was seventh in the World Junior Mountain Running Championships a few years ago. So the young 20-year-old from the Czech Republic, who's only just turned 20 last month, deciding that she wants to get in amongst the mix. There she is in third place, towering over the two Chinese competitors. Chakotova, European Junior Champion two years ago, seventh in Moscow. There's Nyi, the... Uh, third of the Japanese athletes, all the rest quite content in this group. But uh, good to see Drakotova in third place, just checking her watch, tucking in behind Lu and Liu. Lu is the athlete leading with the white cap. I wonder whether that will be discarded as it gets hotter and hotter. So they have a little bit of shade here before they go out onto that uh, loop course which Rob showed you earlier. Not much, it is uh, outside here, not much in the Olympic compound as it were, the, in terms of shade. So they're not going to get a respite as much as they are here from this intense heat really. It's starting to build up. It was 23 but I think now it's gone up, just looking quickly, it's gone up to about 25 now, 26. And it is going up all the time which is... Obviously, the worst possible thing you want with the heat increasing as you get tired, but nevertheless, that is the way that things are going to be in this race. Big, big chase pack. Just notice the athlete in fourth place. I wonder whether it could be a day for the Indian race walkers to get in amongst the mix, bearing in mind that they will be used to training in conditions very similar to this. That's Kushbir Kaur, 
in fourth place. She was fourth in the Asian Championships a couple of years ago, only 38th in Moscow in the 20K. But as I said, these conditions will definitely suit the Indians, and that may be why she's feeling confident enough to be uh, walking at such an intense pace at the moment. There she is, just coming through shot there in fourth place. Riguardo and Giorgio, well, that's the two three very Italians. talented Italians it's there. Virtually, yes, it was virtually the three Italians there. Giorgio, Palisano and Rigaldo there. They, they obviously are talented athletes. I mean, their best times, 126, 128 and 128. It's not far off of what I think the uh, results will be today. This is not going to be fast in terms of the uh, world record. It never is in these sort of conditions. So it, it leaves it open to the athletes who can actually know their, um, their pace judgment absolutely perfectly. And the Italians, I think, know that uh, they've got to be careful. They can't let this break go too far away. And at the same time, they've got to be mindful of not overdoing it in the early part of the race. That's what the, I think the Chinese are trying to do. They're trying to stretch everybody like they did previously in the men's 20K, hoping that they were going to win the Goldens. As I said earlier, Lopez it was of Spain who sport the apple cart there and came through right at the very end when it looked as if Wang was going to win. And... Uh, just snatched that gold medal. In fact, looking at the medal chart, China have three silvers at the moment. So as Rob said, they would uh, dearly love a gold medal here in these 20K walks. Just see the photographers lining the infield. Now they go out from the stadium crowd just cheering them for the last time before they come back in and they love the fact that the three or the two leaders at the moment are homegrown oh and there's Kurt the hot of it quite happy to tag along behind the two Chinese walkers at the moment and she looks pretty comfortable very tall Obviously, stride length for her, not as, uh, or the cadence, not as fast as the Chinese athletes. But nevertheless, you've still got to keep the momentum going, the speed going. Now you see what I mean about coming out from the shade into this intense heat. Concrete road, it acts like a radiator and has been absorbing this uh, heat for the last seven days really or last uh, six or seven days of these world championships we haven't much rain at all have we really no rain at all hardly hardly any yeah no it's been uh, pretty dry now just a confirmation here we've got Lou leading at the moment with Liu the world record holder in second the multi-talented cyclist mountain runner and great race walker Aneska Drahotova of the Czech Republic in third and then comes Eleonora Giorgio of Italy, 10th in Moscow, 14th in the Olympic Games. And actually, we thought that may have been the third of the Italian race walkers, but it was, in fact, the athlete in fifth place, Ludmila Olyanovska, the European silver medalist last year. She is in fifth place, just to the right-hand side of your shot there. And the Ukrainian is definitely one who could feature come the business end if she continues with this kind of rhythm. So we have two Chinese, then the Czech Republic, then Italy, and then Olyanovska there with 60 on her back. And all of the athletes taking advantage of the spray showers, trying to cool these walkers down in the early stages and the early exchanges of what will turn out to be, I'm sure, a brutal hour and a half. There were some very, very tired men out there on the course a few days ago when we had the men's 20K. It was... Uh, a war of attrition towards the end. And if that's what it's like for the 20, what on earth is it going to be like tomorrow for the 50? Oh, well, I think we're going to be struggling just doing the commentary. <laughs> Never than, than, than being out there for the walk. It is tough. It is a tough event, the walk, uh, especially the 50K. People don't realize that it's the longest distance in the um, world calendar. It's, not, it's longer than the, the marathon. And I've said before, if you, if you want to watch the 50K walk, you can actually turn it on, watch the start, go out, do your shopping, wash the car, come in what's gone with the wind and to still turn it back on again and they'll still be walking. It's, it's that sort of intensity and that length of time which kills everybody. Well, you, the uh, world record at the moment, starting now be to sort of move up on to Lou, the, uh, her teammate's shoulder, keeping her pace going. 
just to recap, as I said, in the 20K men's walk, the, the Chinese have taken this walk very seriously indeed. But all the walks very seriously indeed. And by that, I mean that they've actually been up at Sam Ritz at altitude for the last three months or more. I know that for a fact because I had my spies up there. My son was training up there. And he said that uh, he used to go out on his bike in the morning and the, he'd see them out there already. And after about four hours or so on, on the bike, he'd come back. They'd still be out there. And he had something to eat, coffee, a uh, piece of cake. And they'd come past again. And then he said... <laughs> before he go to bed he just make sure they weren't still out there <laughs> but, they, but they were training incredibly hard this is a this is a big deal for them they want a gold medal and i think they think the walks are the area where they're going to get it well just looking back down the history of this event as far as the world championship is concerned china have had one champion liu hong yu back in 1999 they took gold and silver back then actually and every edition since has been won by a Russian so China looking to get back on top of the podium just as they were in 99 and if the likes of Drahotova or the very talented Ukrainian Olyanovska managed to get in the mix the last Italian medalist was Elisabetta Peroni who got a bronze in 2001 and there has never been a medalist from the Czech Republic so uh, there's some history to be made here just looking for Ukrainian medals and there haven't been any of those either so uh, certainly Olyanovska and the likes of Georgie and Hotova have a chance to make some history for their country none more so of course than the two Chinese in first and second they've been inseparable since the race began 37 that is Georgie, just a glimpse of the two chasers. Olyanovska trying to close in on Drahotova of the Czech Republic, who's been walking on her own in third place. The Italian and the Ukrainian just some 10 or 15 metres behind Drahotova. And that's how it's been, really, in terms of the dynamic. And then a big, big group of chase athletes certainly not beyond the bounds of possibility for a few of them to poke their heads out and get in the mix still a very very long way to go steve yeah i mean we can go on talking really but the main part of this race as we saw in the men's will be over the last what maybe three or four k when the fatigue sets in we saw in the men's race that uh, it really does affect not only the, the athletes up front, but the ones that have been you know, judging their pace all the way through really do come through in the end. And you don't see that really as clearly on the track as you do on the race work because of the big gaps between the athletes and the fact that uh, this course doesn't really allow us to see what's going on too clearly behind as on the track where we can see everything really. Well... The Ute now pushing it on from her teammate Luke. Maybe sharing a bit of pacemaking between them. It was 17 laps before we just saw flashed up previously. So they may be taking a lap each or maybe just helping each other out as best they can. Well, it's worth reminding ourselves that in the men's walk, and there's a first warning, and I think that was for Olyanovska. the Ukrainian, Olyanovska. So she needs to be a little bit careful. Inevitably, there will be some casualties as far as the judges are concerned they're all around the course but if we remember back to the men's race Zhen Wang didn't go out front on his own until the 13 kilometer mark and even after that there were massive changes all behind him and some big disqualifications towards the end as well well he had a lot of support from his teammates didn't he cow people like that they, they they helped him as best they can because I think they knew that they had to springboard someone out to try and get that gold medal but even at the end, Wang was tiring badly. When I thought he was he was going to be clear, there's another warning. Not sure who that's maybe the number 48 there. And that's, uh, just trying to check the, that's uh, Shumikina of the Ukraine. Well, as I said, I think this is a tactic that the Chinese like to apply. Is that if, they, if they go hard from the word go, it puts everybody under stress behind to keep keep their pace up to their almost maximum. When you're on the maximum point of uh, your technique, you are susceptible to being judged. Just worth uh, mentioning the two 
really talented, very experienced Portuguese athletes who I saw in that big chase group, Ines Enrique and Anna Cabachina. Cabachina, Portuguese record holder at 20K. She's been around such a long time, six in the Europeans last year, eighth here in Beijing, seventh in Daegu, eighth in Moscow. She always finishes in the top ten. And Ines Enrique has also been there or thereabouts in the last three editions of the World Championship. So the two Portuguese athletes might get in the mix come the business end because you can see that big chase group are in the distance, but it's still Lou in the white cap and Liu just behind her. Drahotova of the Czech Republic has closed the gap and we still have Georgie and Olyanovska working hard together, the Italian and the Ukrainian, trying to close down on the three long-term leaders and yet more warnings there and that time it was a warning for Georgie so the two women walking together in fourth and fifth Olyanovska's had a warning and so too has Eleonora Georgie and they've got to make sure that they're concentrating on that correct technique as well as the speed and that's what makes these walks so fascinating you've got to have all ingredients functioning at the same time it's no good getting ragged in the closing stages because that could bring your race to a premature end and there are some very very talented athletes in that big chase pack and they're certainly close enough that if the speed falters among the lead five anyone from that chase group could find themselves in the hunt for a medal so not much to say in terms not much to say in terms of uh, changing of technique or the way that the tactics are being employed by the Chinese that was another warning there for the Italian I'll tell you what Georgie needs to be very very careful talking about the Italian in fourth place the smaller of the two figures you can just see in the back of shot there's a replay yeah well, these warnings will be transferred back to the, the referee and uh, they've got to be very careful. Just looking through these athletes just behind here. There's uh, Talent, Rachel Talent. She's married to uh, Jared Talent, who will be doing the 50K walk a bit later in the program. And uh, obviously they go out walking together. So it's good to see Rachel still chasing that uh, lead group of three or four there she's in the group just behind about uh, 50 meters or so back there and there's a lone walker there just behind the ukrainian and georgie the italian it's difficult to see who that is from this angle but uh, whoever she is just deciding to try and close it down on the two who've been out on their own in fourth and fifth for quite some time but Georgie the Italian needs to be very careful she's had two warnings in the space of about four or five minutes and there she is lifetime best this season got the flower in her hair there's a lot of that going about at the moment Shelley Ann Fraser Price had a flower in her hair I think Elaine Thompson uh, in the 200 meters ha did last night and I, I think that trend was started by Alicia Montaigne the American 800 meter runner but anyway Georgie just uh, walking behind there in fourth place and now Liu just takes her turn at the front it's Riguardo the other Italian who's just been given a warning she was a bronze medalist here in Beijing I picked up a European bronze back in 06 so the Italians are just coming under some scrutiny here from the judges and the referees and they just need to be a little bit careful as the world record holder takes her turn at the front for the first time well just in case you're wondering what those uh, paddles that are put in front of the um, athletes are actually i mean uh, there's two reasons why they're being warned is one is that they ha haven't uh, kept their leg straight it's called a bent knee infringement which would be you'll see a little almost side sideways v on the paddle um, and the other problems that they can say is that you, they've lost count lost contact with the ground race walkers have to have one foot in contact with the ground at all times so that's the infringement paddles that you'll see put in front of them and uh, they get enough of those they get a warning and then after that it goes back to the track referee and enough of these various infringements and they get dq'd obviously 
There's Cappuccino, the experienced Portuguese walker who we mentioned a couple of moments ago. In Ines Enrique, her compatriot, was uh, just a little way further back down the field, still in that big lead pack. So we still have China first and second, Czech Republic third, then Ukraine, Italy, and Italy. And this gives us, oh, that shot just briefly gave us an indication as to how far back the chase group were from what is now a lead six. And actually, just looking in the background there, I think there may have just been another warning for Ricardo. There you go. Well, that's uh, number 24 there. That's uh, Palatova of the Czech Republic. You just saw the wavy line there, which is lost contact. That was the lost contact warning. So the judges are all around this course. That's why, obviously, I mean, it's fairly obvious, that's why the walkers have to do a loop course in order that they can be scrutinized by the judges, as opposed to the marathon, which obviously just goes out around the city and enjoys the sights, really. I mean, the, the, for the walkers, and especially the 50K walkers, the monotony of the loop and the... Uh, mental discipline that they have to have to keep that concentration going without breaking it up by different uh, scenery going past them is intense really boris over one of the other athletes from ukraine Jing -Jing and there it was just uh, being shown to us the third of the chinese athletes yeah she was just walking behind the ukrainian the uh, chinese director keen to remind us that we've got uh, three chinese athletes here olianovska though She's had a warning, but the European silver medalist is walking alongside Georgie at the moment with uh, Ricardo just behind them. So we have these six, and then there are one or two walkers just beginning to pull away from that big group. You've just got a quick glimpse of it there. This is the reverse of Olianovska and Georgie. Georgie wearing 37, Olianovska. 60 and they've been side by side for about the last uh, 10 or 12 minutes and Aneska Drohotova has been tracking the two Chinese a couple of times she's pulled alongside and there's another warning there as Lu and Liu just begin to wind up the pace. <laughs> Cheers from the crowd for the two Chinese heroines going for gold and going for silver. You can see the ticker tape going through the bottom, just giving you an indication as to who's in that chase group. And it is sizable. There are some 20 or so athletes within half a minute and a lot can change at the business end of this race. Exactly the same principles in a, in a run as in a walk that uh, those who've used up energy getting out front early on. If the energy tank goes empty, the wheels can come off in a serious and spectacular fashion, especially in this kind of weather. And we're coming up to five to nine in the morning local time, and it is absolutely roasting here in the stadium. And our commentary position, it's got the uh, first round of the men's decathlon and groups coming out into the Bird's Nest Stadium. We'll be rocking and rolling a little bit between the action in the stadium and keeping you abreast with what's happening in the walk. But uh, the first action not too far away from getting going here in the stadium, but a very, very warm morning. Barely a cloud in the sky here today. Touchwood, we've been pretty lucky with the weather. It's, uh, it hasn't been too much in the way of pollution. So there's your 5K split. Well, we know the two Chinese are leading. And it's not too big a gap, is it? Once you go past Ricardo, you've got a whole host of world-class walkers within half a minute of the leaders. So this race is by no means 
are given for the two Chinese walkers. Now, this is a little bit significant. For the first time, we've seen a gap of more than three or four metres. There's a warning there for a few of the athletes, uh, including Becky Smith from Australia, 28th in the Olympics in 2012. The judges keeping a close eye on this. But as I was saying, this is the first time we've seen anything close to a significant gap. Back to Drahotova of the Czech Republic in third. Yeah, it's a good move from the Chinese. They've kept the pace going, and it's, uh, it's starting to have an effect on the others. The other thing that's important is at the moment, none of these, uh, these two here have not received a single warning. They're putting the pressure on the others, and they're deteriorating their uh, technique. And by doing that, they're getting a lot of warnings with the chasing uh, walkers just behind them. And Rigoardo had just closed the gap there on Georgie and Olyanovska of Ukraine. So where they were walking in isolation, Georgie and Olyanovska were on their own for quite a long time. Well, suddenly, Rigardo, the Olympic bronze medalist from Beijing, has closed the gap. So those three together, and that has left Drahotova, who was up with the Chinese walkers in the early stages, that's left her in no man's land. And I wonder whether those three, the Ukrainian and the two Italians, will swallow up Aneska Drahotova. And it might actually do her some good if she walks in company as opposed to being totally isolated on her own. But these two must have spoken about the tactics before the race, Steve. This, this has oh. been a definitive step up in pace over the last uh, few metres. Meanwhile, back with this fascinating race walk, we still have China first and second. Liu and Liu. Liu is the world record holder walking without the cap. She has got medals in the last three editions of the World Championship, but has been unlucky to have finished fourth in the last two Olympic Games. China looking for their first gold medal in this event since 1999. And incidentally, in those championships, they got the gold and the silver. A good omen? Well, perhaps. But there's still a long way to go. And as we saw in the men's 20K walk, a lot can change in the closing stages. In that men's race, Zhen Wang went to the front at 13K, but he was reeled in by the powerful Spaniard, Miguel Angel Lopez. So there's always room for some heroics from further back down the field. Having said which, these two women do at the moment look utterly dominant and utterly focused. Yeah, they look so strong. These two working well together. The world record holder there. As we saw um, previously, she can do a negative split to make sure that she comes home hard. And she might not have to do that here, but uh, work, working so hard at the moment just to keep the pace going. And looking back through the uh, scorecards, it's Regaldo who's chasing, who's got the problem. She's got one infringement notice against her already. So they've got to be careful while they're chasing. They don't uh, over overstretch themselves and their technique starts falling apart. I've said that before, just going through the misters there. That's a godsend for these walkers, really. And you can see they're starting now to lap the rest of the walkers, which is just an indication of the pace that they're actually going at the moment. Yes, first and second for the Chinese. Olyanovska's been there in the chase group for quite a while, the Ukrainian, along with the two Italians, Georgi and Rigorado. And this is Drohotova, the European junior champion a couple of years ago. She was the one tracking the two Chinese early on, and it looks as if... So we've concluded our first track action. So we once again rejoin this women's 20K walk, where Liu... The world record holder, the former world junior champion and multiple world championship medalist leads from her compatriot, Zhu Zhi Lu, who was sixth in the Olympic Games. And they've been cranking up the pressure on the rest of the field. Certainly the last time we saw these athletes, we had the likes of Eleonora Georgi, 10th in Moscow, her compatriot, Elisa Rigardo, bronze medalist in Beijing, and the Ukrainian, Lyudmila Olyanovska, they were amongst the chasers. And at one stage, they'd been joined by Erika de Senna of Brazil. But these two are metronomic at the moment, and they're putting the rest of the field under pressure. And with an hour on the clock, Steve Ovet, the others do need to now start thinking about reeling them in if, uh, if 
they're feeling capable. Remember, we watched Miguel Angel Lopez come storming through the field to win the men's 20K, but these two look really, really good. And these three chasers, the two Italians and the Ukrainian, have got a real job on their hands. They have. You can see the Giorgio there and Olinoska on the outside. I think they're almost uh, content. Look at that. There's a bit of, uh, I think, almost a bit of hot dehydration going on there. Everybody's faces look very, very pale indeed. They've got to be very careful. They're trying to catch up, but at the uh, let's be honest, Rob, the two Chinese walkers out in front are, are out by about, what, maybe three or 400 metres now away from the rest of the field. That's a massive gap. And they look comfortable. That's the thing. They're not dying. They look comfortable. They're going through the misters. They're taking on fluids. They're doing everything they possibly can. And the two walkers are class acts. So we'll have to wait and see. Unless something drastically happens, I think, by the looks of things, China are going to get their first gold medal. Well, and that will create some noise in this stadium. Just looking down our scoreboard here in the stadium, Rigado has had two warnings for loss of contact. So the Italian, who is one of the three athletes at the moment chasing one medal, assuming these two stay out front for gold and silver, Rigado has got to be very, very careful. Well, those warnings that we've got are, in fact, some delayed by about uh, 15 minutes or so. So they might have accumulated some more since then. So maybe regardo has got to be very, very careful indeed. So the two Chinese athletes. I wonder if they had a conversation before the walk began about at what stage they say, OK, we've walked together after X number of kilometres. Yeah. It's every woman for herself. Or maybe they never had a conversation at all. Oh, they would have done. I mean, I think they've been pre prepared so thoroughly that they've, um, they've got some plan organised. Um, and maybe it, well, they don't have to make that decision. Maybe the weather and the conditions and the way that they've walked and their feelings will take that uh, decision for them. But uh, uh, you've got two very, very strong walkers here. Lou, although she's not the world record holder, was the champion in the Chinese. So, um, yeah, you don't know what's going to happen over the last stages. Yeah, she did beat the world record holder in those trials. The smaller of the two Chinese and it just looked when we got a glimpse there of the chase group it just looked as if Lyudmila Olyanovska was trying to pull away from the two Italians although it was hard to tell from that rather snatched view we had looking back down the course we're commentating from inside the bird's nest stadium and there are a large number of spectators gathering and they're able to watch the walk on the big screens the the athletes in the stadium just beginning to go through their warm-up rituals for the qualification in the men's high jump. So there's a, a smattering of entertainment at the moment going on in the stadium, but most of the attention is fixed on the big screens on these two women battling for the first Chinese gold of the Beijing World Championships. It's been fantastic if they do get a gold here because uh, every host nation likes to win something, something to cheer about, something to hang their hat on. And at the moment... It's looking a bit thin in terms of uh, possibilities after this walk for the Chinese in terms of getting a medal. High jump, I think, possibly. I don't know. Peter, what do you think? Well, Peter's nodding his head. He well, does think that, uh, that Catherine's is a possibility. listening. <laughs> the Chinese athlete in the men's high jump rank world number two this year, Steve. So they're definitely, well, potentially getting qualifying out the way in with a shout in the men's high jump with Zhang Gowi going over two meters and 38 this season. But this would set... Well, their team made up perfectly for the high jump qualifying starting shortly. And he's quite a character, that high jumper, isn't he? He goes mad when he gets the big clearances. Didn't he have a, a 237 or a 238 earlier this season? And he went absolutely berserk. Yeah, he's gone over 238 this year. And I remember, well, he ripped his shirt off kind of Robert Harting style when he qualified for the world final back in 2011. So he has a history of being colourful, which I'm sure the crowd will enjoy. Maybe not in qualifying, but if he gets through, maybe in the final. Slightly different physique to Harting, of course. <laughs> Just slightly. Harting, the, the absolute beast. Disappointment that he couldn't overcome his injury problems to be here, the uh, charismatic German. Uh, now, we're still watching the two leaders, Liu and Lu, one and two in the Chinese trials. Liu, of course, is the world record holder. We got a snatched glimpse of the chasers, and I think Olyanovska is moving away, or trying to, from the two Italians with whom she's battling currently for the bronze. Well, if you think that uh, they've just been caught by one of the walkers there, they haven't actually they've just lapped one of the walkers there. I think that's Lara Pauli. She's got a sister in the, uh, in the race. It might even be Maria Pauli. I'm not sure from, from Switzerland. But they've just lapped. They're lapping the walkers now almost uh, all the way around this course. These are the chasers. So we have 
Olianovska there with 60, and she does have a slight gap over the two Italians, Georgie and Rigoardo. Olianovska, the European silver medalist last year, 12th in Moscow two years ago, but the 22-year-old is walking much better than that now. But they're still a long, long way behind the uh, Chinese number one and Chinese number two. Liu, the world record holder, but, but she was beaten by Liu, who's walking in the white cap in the Chinese trials. Well, as you said, Rob, the, the crowd in the stadium is massive. Actually, that it's almost full. The only seats that are not actually being occupied are the ones in the sun. I don't blame them. They've moved up into the, into the shade. But uh, this is a big crowd for... Uh, the decathlon in the morning and I think that uh, mainly because I think they'd love to see one of these athletes come into the stadium first and I don't think they're going to be upset because the way that they're actually walking at the moment they look very very comfortable indeed not so much they look comfortable but the others actually chasing don't look that strong either well the conditions are brutal today it, it's one of if not the hottest mornings we've had here in the stadium ah that was useful so we now know that the Ukrainian chaser, along with the two Italians, are some 20, 22, 23, 4 seconds behind. That's a sizable lead for the two Chinese women. And just imagine if they come into the stadium together. Yeah, they've got, well, they've got about 20 minutes or so now still to walk, so anything can happen. But they look strong. You've got to judge a race by how people look up at front. And these two, they've, they've literally went straight to the front as soon as the gun went and as soon as the uh, pace was on they were pushing it all the way it's been metronomic lovely word rob you've used that three or four times i think but uh, it is descriptive <laughs> it is descriptive i think it's uh, it's fairly fierce i don't know about metronomic this is fierce pace i mean they've literally laid it down straight from the word go look at this look at the expressions on the faces of the others behind they are suffering and olianovska is definitely pulling away from the two Italians. It may only be three or four seconds. Trahodska of Czech Republic dropping back. She's now a minute and five adrift. She was the only woman who was prepared to go with the Chinese pace early on, the former European junior champion, and she suffered because of it. Very talented athlete from the Czech Republic now, over a minute adrift from the two Chinese. It's quite interesting the way they've done it. As you said, they went away right from the start. They actually, slightly differently to some other walks we've seen, they are first... 5k was the quickest 21.55 then they slowed a little bit although they got away from the rest uh, I think it was about 22.10 22.15 and then they've done 22.05 for the last 5k but it's not like the Russian tactics where they go quicker and quicker quicker throughout the race they really blazed away from the start I think that was a good that's a good tactic because what it does it, it means that the others have to literally walk at their limit and they start getting all these infringements uh, infringement notices almost immediately from the start rather than just relaxing into it so Gold and silver positions at the moment as they've occupied almost all the way through this race. Even on the 1500 they did in the stadium right at the beginning. They've left the rest trailing in their wake. Olyanovska of Ukraine is in third place. She has about three or maybe four seconds advantage over Georgie and Rigardo. At what stage will one of these women begin tiring great battle ensuing here because of course you'd say on paper that Liu the athlete not walking in the cap would be the favorite because she's won bronze and silver medals at the last three editions of the world championship in this race but Liu beat her in the Chinese trials so this isn't totally one-sided it's not predetermined in favor of the new world record holder Lou, walking with the white cap, will believe she can beat the world record holder just as she did at the trials. Well, they're walking, as I say, side by side or just behind one another at the moment. They must train together. They must know each other inside out. They must know who's the strongest. And there's another. Well, there's Garcia of Peru. Whether she's just retired because she's uh, exhausted or whether she's been pulled through infringement, we yet to find that out but to obviously casualties all over now as the temperature and conditions take their toll on these athletes severe bends these walks really if you're going hard and you have to negate uh, sorry negotiate these bends it's quite difficult 
but it does at least give the leaders the opportunity to see exactly where their rivals are. The other thing is we're inside the compound, um, so you're not going to get massive crowds here. Not everybody is allowed inside this area, so the crowds are basically athletes, coaches, friends, maybe even family. Not many people watching, really, in terms of the, uh, the amount that would be watching if they were allowed out the stadium, like the marathon. Uh, they're in a controlled environment here for the judging, so uh, these athletes probably experience it. It's probably quite quiet out there, as well as being you know, intense in terms of the heat. Well, it certainly won't be quiet when they enter the stadium. I just noticed their last kilometre split was faster, so there's no indication that the Chinese in first and second are struggling. As we look back to Lyudmila Olyanovska, the uh, Ukrainian coach firing the words of support there as she takes the water. 22-year-old has got one hand on the bronze medal, but there are some useful women behind her coming through the field. So uh, there could be some drama in the battle for bronze as we enter the last couple of kilometers. And when will one of these women decide to make the move? They've been inseparable for the last 10 or 12 K. But it's Lou that's done most of the work, if you can call it that out in front. She's the one that's been leading and Liu just behind the world record holder, just happy to let her do that, really. So I suppose, in a sense, you'd say that uh, Lou was doing some of the work, would she, for her teammate? Or does she just like being in front? It's difficult to say. There's Olyanovska. She's in third place. Just looking back down to see the likes of Georgie. I couldn't quite snatch her in the background, or Rigorado, the other Italian who was right up there in the mix. And as I said, we were, they were joined by Erica de Senna at one stage, the Brazilian. But these two way, way out in front. And what a moment it would be for both of them, actually, to get first and second, as China did back in 1999. Olyanovska. Also, after a little bit of history, no Ukrainian has ever finished on the podium in this event. So that would be a special moment for her if she can hang on for bronze. Well, looking at the uh, the only information we've got, Olyanovska hasn't actually got any infringement notices against her, so she's doing very well. Georgi has got one, and as you said, Regaldo has got two at the moment. Well, they're just coming down the feeding stations, drenching, and... The taking as much food as they possibly can on board. Yes, that will be fascinating. Barshim's had a funny old season, really. He was brilliant early on and has then gone through a, a few confidence wobbles. Fascinating to see how he gets on and fascinating to see whether the two Chinese leaders will enter the stadium together or whether Liu, the winner of the trials, or Liu, the world record holder, will try and get rid of their illustrious compatriots before coming in for the last 250 meters. Well, I was going to say, I hope these two athletes know what they've got to do when they come into the stadium, because in the men's 20K walk, the walkers came in and they thought they had to do another lap. And they actually came through the finish line and kept walking. They, didn't, they weren't actually stopped. So I'm sure, though, that these two know exactly where they're going to finish. And if it becomes into the stadium, they've only got less than, what is it, about 150 meters before they actually cross the line. So if it's going to be a sprint, it will take place over the last 100 metres, much the same as the Decathletes were this morning. Yes, the men's marathon runners were trying to carry on as well. It was only when they went round and were stopped by the uh, female heptathletes warming up for the high jump that they realised they weren't supposed to uh, go round the track again. But still, Lou and Liu way, way out front. And the last time we got a glimpse of the chasers, it was still Ludmilla Olyanovska who was in third place with Georgie in fourth and Rigoardo just behind her in fifth. Well, Oli and Oscar, the last time we saw, was about 20 seconds behind. And as you say, that gap is probably about uh, 20 seconds, probably about uh, 200 metres or so. Yes, it's not totally out of the question. That's Georgie, who just gone through shots, so... They're still going well, the Ukrainian in third and the Italian in fourth. And let's not forget, there's a world championship medal at stake uh, between the two of them. Georgie missed out on a medal in Moscow. And this is Olyanovska.
hoping to add to that European silver last year. She was second in the IAAF Challenge in Dunint. The Walkers have their own very competitive challenge series that uh, goes around Europe, some real hot spots. World record by Hong Liu was set at La Corona. That's an event full of prestige and history. There were great scenes of jubilation for her at the end. Totally overshadowed the men's walk, which was a, a classy day in La Corona. So Hong Liu has already had some great moments this season. But world records come and go. Surely, finally taking gold would eclipse that great achievement that she produced in June. And Olyanovska still in third place. She's still look looking OK, I actually. I was going to say, she's looking OK. She's looking determined anyway. She's uh, looking white, but that's a partial dehydration coming on. Now, these athletes having to negotiate some of the lap walkers here. That was Alana Barber of uh, New Zealand. Here's Georgie. Georgie in fourth. Yep, she's pulling away at the moment, I think, in fourth, going clear in fourth. Anyway, these two. Lou, again, just uh, edging ahead of her teammate, as always. Just a half a stride ahead. Well, looking back, looking back at our scorecards, infringement notice is coming thick and fast at the moment. Georgie has got another one, and Regaldo also. We'll have to wait and see what the situation is, because they have to go past the track referee before they're disqualified. So if that's the case, then this is sad, really. There you are. Regaldo with those three uh, cards now being DQ'd as she goes past the track referee. Well, that's a shame. One of those that was chasing now out of the chase. Well, that's Another certainly... Another warning there. That's a warning there, which means the loss of contact for Lou. Yeah, Lou who set the pace, coming under some scrutiny there. And that certainly, the fact that uh, Rigoardo has gone, she was in fifth place just behind Georgie. That makes the task of Olyanovska hanging on to the bronze that little bit easier. So it can all unravel in the closing stages. And the Italians were sailing close to the wind because they were the first athletes among the lead group to start getting warnings. So, well, the other factor is they're starting to get tired now. When you get tired... Your, your technique deteriorates, and that's the problem. They've got to keep this pace going, These two, the two Chinese. It's, it's coming close now to crunch time, but at the same time, if you try and keep the pace going when you're tired, then you start getting infringement notices, and that's what's happening at the moment. Lou there just got one. I don't think she's got any more against her name, and I don't think Liu has got any more against her name at all. There it was, and she recognised it. She acknowledged the referee. Well, I wonder whether that will just be in the back of her mind if this comes down to a real increase in pace towards the stadium there's still absolutely nothing to separate them wow. and there's georgie being disqualified as well she was in fourth place steve so both the italians who were on the hunt for the bronze trying to track down olianovska both the italians have gone well that's sad but then that's inevitable really if you're trying to catch up and you're trying to increase your pace again the technique starts falling apart at both ends of the scale as you try and increase your pace or as you start tiring your technique starts faltering well i make it in terms of anyone trying to catch olianovska for bronze anna cabachina we mentioned her a couple of times the very experienced portuguese walker she now i think is the next athlete behind olianovska but the ukrainian in third still looked good the last time we got a glimpse of her the head was steady and it didn't look as though she was rocking and rolling too much. I think Cabocina is almost 20 seconds behind, though, I think, Olianoska. So there's a big gap now that the two Italians are out. It looks as if, really, Olianoska is clear in third. Well, Liu, just now, the tour of the two Chinese may be starting to move to the side. They're hearing the bell. This is it. This is crunch time now in the walk. If you, if you can sprint in a walk, this is the time to do it, isn't it? Well, but that's the point, isn't it? Lou needs to be a little bit careful yeah. because she's had the warning. Yep. Well, the gloves are off now. They've got each other on the verge of a world championship, gold or silver. But both of them want top spot on the podium. This is where it's going to start to get fascinating. That's a glimpse of Cavicina. She's trying to come through the field to close down Olyanovska, who at the last time we got an update was clearly out on her own in third place. You get the feeling now, though, don't you, that Liu, the world record holder, is asserting herself 
over a compatriot, Luke, who just glanced at her there as if to say, yeah, you're going to go away from me, aren't you? <laughs> and I, I think, think that's what's going to happen here. It looks very similar to a pattern that's been set up before. Just behind, Olianoska obviously walking fast as she possibly can. There's a big gap there, though, but she's just got to concentrate. This is a great performance from her to get the bronze medal here at the World Championships. A magnificent performance. The highlight of her career, if she can just keep going. She hasn't, as far as I can see, got any infringement notices against her at all, which is a big plus for her. She can afford, maybe, to get one or two of those as she tries to close the gap, but uh, she doesn't really want to take that gamble, I don't think. I, I think, in her mind, she will she will know that the best she's going to do subject to disqualifications which are very unlikely to happen to the two Chinese because it's just the one warning between the two of them and we saw that a little bit earlier for Liu I think Olyanovska is going to want to consolidate the bronze medal here and fascinating to see where the gap's going to come between Liu and Liu and there's a warning for Liu so they're now one each between the two of them another kilometer just tucking in under 420 still side by side and there's less than a K to go and I think that's Olianoska just going the other way through the demist up well two infringement notices but nothing really to worry about for these two at the moment and they are still stride for stride together there it is loss of contact uses I know okay I know well there's a growing sense of expectation here in the bird's nest it's uh, just coming up for 10 to 10 in the morning local time and it's really busy here considering it's still a weekday a working day and the noise in this stadium will be deafening when they come through here is Olyanovska clear in third place at the moment and now we can see the sweat and the marks of water where she's poured it over herself to stay cool it's been a fantastic walk for the European silver medalist but World Championship bronze would surely be the best thing she's achieved so far, assuming she can keep it going. Well, Luke, still working hard. The cap hasn't come off. It's been there all the time. Liu, though, is now starting to edge ahead just a shade, isn't she? I mean, it's a, it's a tough... It's a tough ask, really, isn't it? Who's your money on? Come on, Steve. Well, yeah, you've got to give it to the world record holder, really. She's just been shadowing all the time. Liu looks so strong. I think I would agree with that. There's Kaua, uh, one of the uh, early pace setters who was trying to go with that relentless surge at the front from the two Chinese. She's being lapped, and they've left everybody, apart from possibly Olyanovska, completely trailing in their wake. I would probably agree with you, though, Steve. Hong Liu with three World Championship medals, but never the gold. She has the motivation and she has the knowledge, Hong Liu, that she's beaten her compatriot to the world record. And even though she lost to her in the Chinese trials, she's got the credentials and maybe that extra two or three percent of belief that she'll have the speed in the last five or six hundred meters little look over the shoulder yeah, there from yeah, you yeah. <laughs> and she's still there yeah she still is i'm not that she's laughing though do you see that she was smiling there these two are look, they're, they're talking they're to, talking one another. to yeah, each other are. i'm not sure what's going on there but uh, the prestige of winning the only gold medal at these championships is quite significant i'm not sure whether friendship can actually hold that really well they're not going to cross the line arm in arm i don't think Ala, the first edition of the london marathon in 1981 but they are going to enter the stadium together. They're talking. They're having a full-blown conversation here. Is this, I think she's probably saying, this is where I'm going, OK? Or, or is she saying, no, I'll hang on for you? I'm not sure what's going through the conversation there, but absolutely unbelievable. There's the only part that they're going to get a little bit of shade. Still talking, still deciding what's going on. And as they come into the stadium, this, as Rob said, the noise will absolutely erupt. We can just see them emerging from the tunnel from our commentary position in about four or five seconds time it will be a wall of noise listen to this a big roar and a big reception for both of these magnificent chinese race walkers they talked about this being their best chance for gold as Olyanovska's coming into the stadium, already carrying the Ukrainian flag. She's away and clear for the bronze. But Hong Liu, the world record holder, 
is coming up to the line. There's a tape waiting to greet them. Chihu Lu, I think, is going to pick up the silver medal. There's no danger of a sprint between them. The world record holder is the world champion, and it's silver for Zhihi Lu. First and second for the Chinese, just as it was back in 1999. They deserve that. A massive reception for both women. And as she makes her way down the home straight, Lyudmila Olyanovska adds a world championship bronze to her European silver. And she's done it the hard way on her own for the last seven or eight K. A brilliant bronze for the Ukrainian. Three fantastic medalists to complete the podium. And what a reception for the two Chinese walkers as they entered the stadium. A magnificent moment for them. Well, absolutely fantastic. You'd have hoped that they could have given them both a gold medal because uh, you really, I think she was chatting to a teammate and say, shall I take it? And her teammate Lou said, OK. She was a stride behind. There's the flags coming up. The first gold medal at these championships in the 20K race walk for women. They waited a long, long time for this gold medal and the race walkers delivered. Brilliant from both of them. I couldn't believe it that they were having a full-blown conversation just before they came into the stadium, but wonderful moments for them as they emerged and a great celebration going on for Ludmila Olyanovska. China one and China two, and that presentation will be a moment to savour for both of them, actually, later on today. Cabocina, very experienced Portuguese race walker, national record holder, and she's had a fantastic walk. Helped to a, a really decent finishing position after the unfortunate disqualifications of two of the three Italians. And Palisano, the third of them coming across there. I was there. going to say, Palisano coming through, the only surviving Italian in the race walk. So that's a good performance from her. Hong Liu, what a moment for her. Bronze in Berlin, silver in Daegu, bronze in Moscow. And finally, at her fourth consecutive medal, she gets the one she wants on home soil. That is the way to do it. Erika de Senna, she was up with the leaders early on. And a good walk by one of the Australians. Just coming across the line now as Zhuzi Lu celebrates a great uh, silver. Olyanovska breaking into a jog, as she's now allowed to do. And that's... Uh, Aneska Trahotova, she was the only walker who went with the early pace of the Chinese, and she's been absolutely broken. The winning time, 1.27.45, the time almost irrelevant, to be honest. This is about the gold and silver, national pride, and the win of a worthy, worthy champion. Ortega coming across from Mexico and Poves. Very, very tired, the Spaniard. And still the celebrations continue for China, as they will do for quite some time to come. And remarkably, despite the conditions, we've just had a national record for India in sixth place. Kushbi Akawa, 130.06. Well, the Indians seem to be producing some reasonable results in, in, in track as well as the walks. And they particularly have a lot of good walkers, yeah. both male and female. Well, it's been a very hard day up there for these walkers. The conditions now at about 30 degree plus heat. But uh, Lou, I think, she was holding back a little bit. And really, I think her teammate just behind her, Lou, in second place, I think they would say, I think Lou was going to probably go earlier, but was holding back to help her teammate come through with her to the finish. And that may well have been the conversation they yeah. were having. Big roar in the stadium as Perez crosses the line. We've got the early stages of the men's high jump qualification. And uh, I'm sure Peter and Catherine will bring you news of uh, the early form of the Chinese jumpers. There's a real sense of 
patriotism in the stadium fired up by Lou and Liu picking up the gold and silver and here's the third of the Chinese walkers Jing Jing Ni fourth in the Asian Games last year she's absolutely exhausted this was the moment as they entered the stadium and they'll remember that reception for yeah. a long time Steve yeah fantastic I mean the noise really for, for a crowd that's only been sitting here watching the decathlon for the last two hours or so to have their walk come in and to take the gold medal that's all they wanted really Lou I think knew that she was in form and just helped her teammate come through to silver there but to one and two for China in the 20k walk their arms go aloft hard hard race that for the women and a good performance right from the word go the gun went and these two just took off well she was the overwhelming favorite but she's delivered in style because we've seen some favorites come here to China and falter but Hong Liu carried the pressure and the weight of expectation of a nation and she carried it in style Juji Lu signing the autographs I think she'll be doing a few more of those before today is over Elena Lyudmila Olyanovska look ab looks absolutely exhausted but she should be really proud of that effort that was sensational walking from her for the bronze just looking at Olyanovska actually she was going to do a lap of honor but they she got stopped and I think she's been asked to do one of the uh, the dope controls so they they obviously given her um, the uh, information that she's got to go straight to 